I'm back at the ER once again and again and again and again and at this point I've completely lost track of how many times I've come but yes I'm back in the hospital and even though usually you come to the hospital for them to help you and to give you answers I don't really have any clear definite answers to give you in fact the doctors seem kind of stumped by what's going on because it's not logical. So if you watched the last couple of videos, you kind of know what's been going on. But I want to do a quick recap. So last week when I was in the ER, um, the strategy or the explanation they came up with was it's your body going into withdrawal because you've been on Decadron for so long, your body's addicted to it. And as you lower the dose, sometimes there are certain thresholds that you hit that your body just is not able to handle because it has become addicted to it. And as a result of that, uh, you're having these symptoms. So the strategy was let's temporarily re-increase the dose. So last week when I came, I was down to half a milligram every other day. And then they re-increased me to one milligram per day for five days, and then half a milligram every day. And the plan was stay at that level until you get a chance to speak to your neurologist since he's the one in charge of lowering the dose so you can come up with a plan with him <clears throat> long term to slowly keep decreasing it until eventually you can stop completely. Which seemed logical, seemed like a good strategy, but the fact that I'm back in the emergency room a week later seems to indicate, okay, maybe that was not what was causing the issue. Because at this point they've, you know, run a bunch of different tests and they haven't really discovered anything new and their strategy is pretty much the same pretty much the exact same theory of, you know, withdrawal of symptoms. Uh, the only solution we can think of right now is to re-increase the dose once again. So uh, this is actually my second time filming this video. The first time when I was filming it, um, the two doctors came to speak to me, so I had to stop and restart. And um, the conclusion, once again, they came up with was exactly this. So let's re-increase it to probably 1.5 for a while, see if it helps. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you won't come back. But at this point, we can't really run any other tests to try to determine what else it might be because there's no other tests that we can really run at this moment. So that's the strategy we're going with. So we'll increase the dose once again. And it's always kind of a tricky game because if you increase too much, then it pretty much cancels out the effect of immunotherapy, so I need to stop immunotherapy. But at the same time, if you don't increase enough, then I'm going to keep having these symptoms and obviously, you know, not being able to eat and throwing up for extended periods of time is not good for the body. Like, the stronger my body is, the better equipped it is to fight the cancer. And the weaker it is, the less equipped it is to fight it. And not eating and throwing up is definitely making me weaker. So it's Attends not. Uh, oui. Okay, merci. Uh, sorry, just to fill up my lunch. <laughs> um, and the thing is, the reason why certain things don't make sense to me and why the doctors are stumped to some level is because last week. I came, they had this theory, they increased the dose, and then I went back to having the exact same symptoms, even though previously when I was slowly lowering, when I was at one milligram per day, fine, no symptoms, no issues. When I went down to half a milligram per day, fine, no symptoms, no issues. It's only when I went down to half a milligram every other day that I started having these issues. And now that I've been back up to one milligram for five days, and then yesterday, no, two days ago, I re, re, re decreased to half a milligram per day. Uh, I still have the symptoms, even at one milligram. So it's like, it doesn't make sense. Yet this is the only logical explanation. So it's like, it both makes sense, it doesn't make sense at the same time. So at this point, it's like, there's nothing else that we can do. All we can do is, you know, I'm probably gonna be discharged uh, within an hour or two. And once again, it's going to be the same thing. So it's like, all right, re-increase the dose. And let's keep our fingers crossed that it works and you don't come back here. And let's just also keep our fingers crossed that 
a, you can keep doing immunotherapy. So as I mentioned in the previous video, my doctor is currently on vacation. He's coming back next week. So hopefully I'll be able to see him after he comes back, discuss everything with him to, you know, try to coordinate everything with immunotherapy and the Decadron and the levels and everything. <clears throat> I might also need to speak, I mean, I definitely need to speak eventually to my neurologist. I'm just not sure if it makes sense to speak to him now or let's like wait till we kind of figure out a more logical plan and we test this new level out, see if it works, see what doesn't work. At this moment, they're like, you know, the only way to know truly if your body, like if this is withdrawal, if it's because your body's not able to produce the things that are given to you by the medication and obviously if it given you given you from a medication the body won't produce it naturally but it's like the only way to know if that's the reason why you're having these symptoms because your body is no longer able to produce it well we need to get you off it completely and given the severity of your symptoms that's simply not an option so it's like that's why they can't run the test to determine whether this is what's causing it or not so for now it's just like this is the theory we have to go with because we can't run any other tests. If this ends up not working, the next step would probably be to send me to an endocrinologist and then he can do some tests and maybe try to figure some things out. We don't really know, so at this point it's pretty much same exact strategy as last week except the dose is slightly higher and we hope for the best. So that's, that's pretty much where we're at at the moment. Plus side is I won't have to spend more than a day in the hospital. Downside is there's a chance, I don't know if it's a high chance or a low chance, but there's definitely a chance that it could do the exact same thing that it did last week. Feel good for a couple days because they gave me a higher dose and it lasts, you know, 72 hours. So it could feel good for a couple of days and then just slowly revert back to the exact same situation that I'm in now. And I have to come back once again and they have to do tests once again and come up with a new strategy. So, you know, it's good and bad in a way. So I'm going to focus on the positive, which is the fact that I don't have to spend too much time in the hospital, especially, you know, chilling in the hallway rather than having my own room. Definitely not the most fun I've had, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, you can't really control it. At least I got to feel hunger for the first time in two months and I got to eat and not throw up, which is very, very rare at this point. So, you know, just for that, it was worth coming. But yeah, I'm really hoping that, you know, re-increasing will help. Not because I want to increase this, because obviously the more we increase it, the longer it's going to take to decrease and finally stop taking it completely. But it's just like I can't deal with not being hungry and throwing up all the time and not being able to eat and my life just sucking. Like, I need this to be over. So it's like I'm conflicted. Part of me wants this to work even though I know that increasing the dose is definitely not the ideal solution. So anyway, it's out of my control. So whatever is meant to happen will happen. So yeah, I'll head home, probably have at least one or two good days. And after that, we'll see. So keep your fingers crossed and I'll talk to you at some point in the future.